Good morning and welcome to your flip video going over um, some of the things that I saw yesterday while you guys started your search work. I want to give you kind of a brief overview of what I'm noticing before we move into um, the hard research for your history of computers project. Um, namely, what I want to go over today are some of the, the pitfalls that it is common to run into and then talk a little bit about creating your own search strategy. This should take um, probably about 10 minutes and I'm going to walk you through one program that I really like for, for taking notes and then um, give you one demo of kind of how I would see this process working to maximize your research time. Um, if we look over here at the Google slide, what I did was kind of make a, a running list of some of the things that I saw yesterday. Um, the first thing that I noticed was that most of you dive right into researching, um, usually by typing the word into Google and then from there clicking on one or two links. In fact, at one point, the um, it was interesting because there were seven people all on computers that all had the exact same screen up. And it was interesting that all of you would be finding the exact same search. Um, one of the ways that this happens is by not using guiding questions. Um, guiding questions are kind of the, the reflection that you do before you begin searching. And I didn't see a lot of that happening where you would spend a few minutes thinking about what you already know about the topic and then asking yourself what questions are you looking for the answers for. Now, part of this is because I didn't give you any questions, but in absence of the teacher giving you questions, you should generate your own. Now from the questions, what you'll find yourself doing is keeping a running list of keywords. And I usually do this in Google Docs where I would find a keyword or something that I want to focus on. And then as I'm reading and learning more, I copy that keyword off and that becomes another thing that I can search for. What ends up happening is you take running notes. And these are notes that you will either clip from the web or a picture that you will find and then as you're reading more and learning more you're adding to your keyword list and then doing more searching and then eventually that gives you a whole picture and a lot of your questions end up being answered finally i saw some um we'll say interesting techniques in terms of note taking in general this ranged from people who started taking notes in powerpoint um, to people who warts or forgetting to grab links so that they could reference the resources back. So, so let's flip from what we saw to a demonstration of how this could have gone differently. Um, what I've done here is on this screen, I've got the program Evernote open. Now you don't have to use Evernote, but Evernote's a great note taking system. Um, it requires a login, but the login is free. And then there are some, there are some really cool tools that you can use along with Evernote. Um, that can make your job a little bit easier. I'm in Chrome right now, and what I want to show you here is this symbol up here is the Evernote Clipper, and that's what we're going to use um, as we go back and forth from our search screen to our note-taking screen. But let's start with our note-taking screen, and let's start with some questions. So if we're looking at the history of computers, and one of the things that we that I gave you was themes. And the first theme I gave you was that things are faster and smaller, but the same cost. So one of the questions as we start to talk about this is, um, what was the first computer? Now we already know that answer because I gave it to you, but it's still a question that we might want to have answered. Why do computers keep getting faster? Nothing here requires an in-depth knowledge of computers. You don't have to be an expert. We're just getting this from the idea here. How can computers be so small? What are the most expensive parts of a computer? How much should a computer cost? So these are just questions that I've generated solely from the, the theme. Now, a lot of people will start with Google. Some people will start with Wikipedia. Either one of those is pretty good to start with. So let's start with that first question. When was the first computer invented. 
Now, there's nothing wrong with clicking on the first link, but don't force yourself to click on the first link. No easy answer to this question because all the different classifications of computers, therefore the document has been created with a listing of each of the first computers. First time the computer word computer was used was in 1613. Okay, now if you're thinking about in terms of a presentation, that would make a really cool slide. So let's take this and go up to Web Clipper. And we're going to put this into... We're going to add the tag computer, add a comment first time the word computer used, and we're going to save that. And that was clipped. Then it has, you have other notes like this, related notes, history of computers, computer science, ISTE keynote. So it's saying, look, you have other clips that match the clip that you were looking at. It's just going to keep this running idea for you. First mechanical computer, the difference engine, the analytical engine, kind of like that picture there. So let's get a clip of that image. First programmable computer. Really, this page is pretty good. History computers, good overview, save the article. Now, from here, computer, difference engine, analytical engine, There's our friend ENIAC that we talked about, and that's a good picture of ENIAC, so we're going to clip that. First computer company, first stored program was UNIVAC. So now, as I'm scanning through this article, I'm grabbing more keywords. First transistor computer. Okay, now that's going to add to a question. What is a transistor? Because it sounds like something we hear a lot about, but we're not really sure what it is. So let's use that as our next move. So let's go to Wikipedia and let's ask Wikipedia what a computer transistor is. And from Wikipedia, we see a transistor computer is a computer which, is, which uses discrete transistors or vacuum tubes, or instead of vacuum tubes, vacuum tubes, keyword. And if you read an article on ENIAC, you'll know that ENIAC uses vacuum tubes. A second generation of computers throughout the late 50s and 60s featured boards filled with individual transistors and magnetic memory cores. Other early machines, first commercial fully transistorized calculator, schools, and hobbyists. So now we kind of have an idea. Magnetic memory cores, integrated circuits. These machines remain the mainstream design when integrated circuits started appearing. Integrated circuits. So from Wikipedia, I'm pulling key terms. Now this brings us to the Wikipedia questions. Wikipedia valid source or not? There's there's all sorts of ways to look at this. We can look at the research that says Wikipedia is sometimes more accurate in certain areas than other areas. But ultimately, what we know about Wikipedia is anybody can post to Wikipedia, and at any one particular time, it may or may not be the most inaccurate resource. So Wikipedia is a great place to get started but then be able to back it up with other websites. So it's great for finding your initial questions and it's great for finding your terms, like this integrated circuit term. Now that's starting to look like a computer, isn't it? 
These are those circuits that we see inside of computers. And as we read, an integrated circuit or monolithic integrated circuit or microchip is a set of electronic circuits on one small plate of semiconductor material. Integrated circuits are used in virtually all electronic equipment today and have revolutionized the world of electronics. So while I would never quote Wikipedia for this, that then becomes my next piece of research. So what you should see is that throughout your research process, it's a, it's a series of developing questions looking through search engines, Wikipedia, resources, databases to find the answers to those questions and keeping running lists of terms that you can use for later searches. Now to show you some of what we were talking about with the power of Evernote, if you look up on Evernote here, you see that all of those pictures that I grabbed have their website. Picture and website. The article that I clipped and the website for that article. And then even the notes that I wrote down about that article as I was writing notes. So a combination of Evernote as a system combined with using these web clippers that you have on apps and on programs that you can install like Chrome, give you the ability to keep a running list of all of your notes. And the fact that you can tag them, categorize them and put them in folders and access them from any computer anywhere in the web makes Evernote a very powerful note taking tool for all sorts of research for all sorts of classes. That's our overview of note taking today in the note taking process. And I hope it helps you as we get ready to study the history of computers and do research throughout the rest of the year. Thanks.